questions about this? Questions, 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 questions. Yeah. Number five? You got it. You got something stuck in your ear. Ooh, dude, how do you see that? All right. Yep. All right, it says for each linear equation, identify the slope and the y-intercept. So this is our slope. So our slope is actually negative 3. Notice I did not write the x. Okay, a lot of people will write the x as well. x is not part of the slope. And this is our y-intercept. And I love that you can put the y-intercept and make it as a point. So 0, comma 1. I love seeing that. Okay? Good. What else do you see on the 157, 158? I didn't even ask you. It's okay. I sit here. All right. No. Whatever, dude. What else can I help you with on 157, 158? Nine? Okay. Number nine. They said the slope is two and the y-intercept is equal to negative seven. So all we have to do is we're going to take our slope-intercept form, and I'm going to take our slope, and I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to take my y-intercept, plug it in there. So I get y equals 2x plus negative 7. You can leave it like that, or you could reduce the signs and make it this. Anything else? We just have the odds, right? Yeah, just the odds. Okay, let's just make it sure. Hey, quick, uh, curious, did any of you watch the video on the odd problems to make sure how they did? I'm just curious. I mean, you're not in trouble if you did. I have it there available. Yeah. Stretching out a little bit. Any other questions? Going once. Going twice. All right. So stay on that page. We're going to look at the even problems, make sure we can feel comfortable with it. So 157, 158. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Good seeing you. Come over here for me. Shy. If you see her, let us know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Because I saw her today. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. This is problem number two on page 157. Agree? My friends, let's take a look. I'm on page 157, number two. I know I did not assign it, but let's talk about it. So what are some things that you could guarantee we know about this, Morgs? Morgan? Yes. What, do you, what can we identify about this? <laughs> Sorry. What can I identify about that? Good. Upward. It's number two. Hey, what's the y-intercept? Morgan, what's the y-intercept? One is correct. Okay, so this is B. So that means my B value is one. So, so far, I know this on my equation. Do you agree? So now, I can, I can count. I can count to get the rest of my slope. Okay, so ready? So I'm going to go up one, up two, up three, up four. So I went up four. And then I'm going to go right one, two, three. So what's my slope? If I went up five and right three, what's my slope? Five over three. Five over three or four over three? Four, four, four over sorry, three. Sorry. Is it over one? Four, four, over, four. four over three. So slope is four over three. 
So now I know my slope is 4 over 3x plus 1, and there's my linear equation. Okay? Hey, did I use the slope equation to solve that? I, I guess I could have. I could have done x1, y1, x2, y2. But because I had the graph available for me, I was able to count up and right. Okay? All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four, they have uh, one, two, and one, two, three, four, two. Looks like I, I think they have these two points. And zero, two. So this is a bad drawing version that I did. My friends, can I identify the y-intercept on what I have sitting there? Yep. Yeah, what is my y-intercept? It's 2. So this is my y-intercept. So my y-intercept happens at 2. So that means I know this so far. Okay, notice I'm taking baby steps on it. I'm not trying to do everything in my head and go, I think it's this. And it's like, ah, you're wrong. Take baby steps. It'll get you through it. Okay. All right. So do I have to use my slope equation or can I count? Can I count to get my slope? I sure can count. So let's see. I go down one, down two, down three, down four. So I went down four. If I went down four, is it positive or negative? Negative. And then I'm going to go right. One, two, three. So what's my slope? Negative 4 over 3. So just replace the M. Keep the X there. There's my equation. Now, some things that I see people do with this that is incorrect. You get this, and then all of a sudden you combine negative 4 thirds together and add 2 to it, and you're like, I was, so I got some, I got uh, 2 thirds. You made a mistake. What's up, buddy? Sure. Come late, I take your chair. Sorry. All right. So, so on page 157, we just did number two and number four. So sometimes we will hand you a problem that is relatively simple to do. Relatively simple to do if you recognize the parts of a graph. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go down to number six. Number six, again, this was not assigned to us, but we're just kind of utilizing this as notes. They want us to identify what the slope is, and they want us to identify what the y-intercept would be. Is this problem kind of out of order, or is it in an appropriate order? It's out of order. We should add the x value first. So I'm going to do this. It's a negative x. What's the sign on 4 over 3? What's the sign on 4 thirds? Positive. Okay, so now this is set up in this fashion. Do you agree? Yes. So what would my slope be? Um, negative 1 over 1. Yeah, that would be my slope right there. So you can have it as negative 1 or you can make it negative 1 over 1. It's your choice. Okay, what would my y-intercept be? Close. This is this is indeed my y-intercept, but how do I want you to write a y-intercept? I don't care if it's a whole number or not, but I'm going to write it as a point. So if I write it as a point, where do I put the zero, first or second? First. Stay with your first instinct. Gosh, is it okay that I have a y-intercept that's a fraction? Could that happen? Well, I, it just existed there, so I guess it can happen. I don't think this would be a nice one to graph. I mean, if I said, hey, graph this, you're like, okay, four-thirds. There's one, there's two, there's, there's, there's like four-thirds. And then I go down one and right one. Yeah, yuck. Yuck. That's the official math term. 
Yuck. All right. Well, we have now come to a point where I see some people that don't have anything out, so they're just like, that got this. That's a subtle hint to get something out if you have nothing out. See if they, they grab onto it. Hey, Nuri, what do you have sitting in front of you? No, no, no. What's the spiral thing that's in front of you? That's your book, right? Okay. Look around you. Is someone around you that doesn't have something to write on in front of them? Like, you, you have what you have, so I, I was just pointing out. But I was just, I bet you there's somebody sitting on your left side. I bet. Okay, got a pencil out. Did you get it? Get it? Is it almost there? All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Number eight. All right. I want to find the slope and I want to find the y intercept. Let's see. I mean, add Peter. So you, you, we should manipulate it? Yeah. We can manipulate a problem? Okay. So my goal is I want to try and get my equation to look like this, which means I'm getting what letter by itself right now? Y. I'm trying to get the Y. I want this all by itself. Agree? Okay, so I heard the first step. I like this. And this is where people start getting hung up a little bit because you're like, how do I add uh, 12 and 3x together? Must be 15x. Um, uh, help me out. This cancels. That leaves me this. How can I write this? That is the appropriate way. Yeah. Or, or, I, I like it. 3x plus 12, I like it. So 3x plus 12. And the reason I wrote it that way is I want this to be first. Okay. Friends, I'm still trying to solve for y. Do I have y by itself yet? No, it's, just, it, it's highlighted stirrup. It's not by itself. Yeah, I'm going to do this by 6, this by 6, and this by 6. Does that seem like okay to do? What I do to one thing, if I do to all, it should be right. These cancel. That's y. 3 over 6 reduces to uh, one, half. 1 half. 12 over 6 reduces to? My friends, what is my y-intercept? 2, so I'll write it as 0, comma 2, because I get it from this. Agree? What's my slope? 1 over 2. My slope's 1 over 2. Yeah, but so we have worked on this type of stuff in the beginning quite a bit. And a lot of math deals with trying to isolate a letter, which we call a fancy term for a letter. It's called a variable. But um, sometimes we might have to convert. We might have to convert. And it's not wrong to convert. That's convert, E-R-T. Okay. So just something to think about that might come up. Now, you remember, hey, on the test, you remember this was one of the problems that, what did we do on this for this type of problem when it was on the test? What was the super secret thing we did? It was a part of the matching. Oh, it went into the last. Yeah, we did all the rest of the matching, and then we came back to this one, right? So I might not have this as a matching on a test or quiz later, so it's good that we see we can manipulate stuff around. We can get y by itself. All right. Yeah, not today. And I don't think tomorrow. Next Friday? Man, I plan to be watching the Macy's Parade and still be in a food coma. I'll be on a plane. 
I'll be on a plane next Friday. That's right. <laughs> they'll have to, they'll have to adjust, they'll have to adjust the weight of the plane to make it fly because everyone have overeaten the day before. Yeah. yeah. And everybody with their instruments in the exact same plane, they're going to really have to balance that out. Like, my instrument, there's 11 pounds, and each of our instrument cases weighs like 15 pounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So, bring it back together, please. Bring it back together. Let's take a look at problem number 10. I want to use the information given me on number 10 to put it into the linear equation on the blue. So does anyone want to take a shot at what my linear equation is going to be? I'll give you the y as a gift. y equals what? Negative 5 over 1 or just negative 5, either way, plus 4. Cool. So all I did is I took this and plugged it in for my m, plugged this in for b. That's all I did. I mean, that's like a really simple problem. And you know where we're going to sneak one of these in? There might be a couple problems, there might be a problem like right before that's like number eight. And you're like, ugh. And then I give you some relief on this, but a lot of people will skip this going, uh, it can't be this easy, so I'm just going to skip it. Uh, kid you not. I, 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 not. Oh, it's amazing. So I used to teach something called core A math, which was basically five levels below this. And there were times that we, you know, and this is when I was at a school, had block scheduling, so we'd have to sit around in class for 90 minutes. So this was back in the chalkboard days. So I would literally, on the chalkboard, do every problem that's on the quiz. It would be all the way around the classroom. I would forget to erase the problems that were the exact ones on the quiz and say, and say, and then here's the quiz. I'd have kids walk up to me, I don't know how to do any of it. I mean, and I wouldn't point out to them. I'd be like, okay, the very first question is, 2x equals 6, divide each side by 2, x equals 3. That would be written on the board. The very first problem on the test would be 2x equals 6. It was on that board. I kid you not. It was just like... Did they notice? Every now and then you get a kid notice going, dude, it's up on the board. Okay. Got it. Here, you're done. That kid turned in blank. I don't get any of this. It's like, how are some of these kids finding their way back to school each day? I have it right there on the board. It's written on the board. And, I, and I'd be halfway through the, almost done with the quiz. I'd be like, oh, shoot, I forgot to erase the boards. Oh, that's on the board? Mm -hmm. I, I look at the board every day. equations on the board during quizzes. Still, you know, today. Final? Today? No, like for quizzes. Like, oh, you're you're really really well, yeah, for the final. Hey, you should leave the entire final, every problem up on the board. Well, I don't know. Sad thing is, not this class, I have other classes. They would ignore it. I mean, think about this class. We get let you use that take home test yeah. that we've gone over and you have the notes for, and there are still kids that would, oh, I forgot that. I, I it's like, dude, that'd be folded up in my sock and make sure, you know, it might come out with hair on it and stuff and all sweaty. But, dude, I'd have it. I, I wrote down, um, it was those some notes that we took like a week or two ago. I'm not sure I haven't thought that far in advance. I'll figure it out, though. 
I think we should at least be able to have like one page like that big that we can write whatever we can on it. Or you can have like a little page like All right. All right, let's bring this back together. Bring it back together. So problem number 12. Problem number 12. <clears throat> I'm trying to make problem number 12 look like this. The only thing I have guaranteed right now is this. That's a B still. Do you agree with that? Yes. Now, I have that 3 comma 4. All right, hang on. i got to figure this out. I, I know I had this equation that we had done quite a bit. The, because it, it, it's not always going to work out real pretty for you. I mean, sometimes it'll work, but I, I wouldn't suggest it. Okay, so now I'll make sure that you have this equation and that you have this equation. But does everyone feel comfortable that I have this point and this point is not the B value? Agree? Because think about what this point is. If I were to graph this point, I have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have this point right here. Is this the y-intercept? Or does the y-intercept have to fall on that vertical line someplace? Where does the y-intercept exist? On that line. I don't have it. So this might be what we're trying to head towards and this is my maybe where we've gotten to so far but then we we're kind of stuck so i'm going to go back to my point slope where i have x1 and i have y1 agree and if i plug a point in what do we know about the signs when we plug it back in so the four if i plug it into that becomes a what it is a positive four it becomes a, ooh, look at that. I know the slope. When I plug the slope in, it just plugs directly in. What, are, what does that 3 become? What does this 3 become when I plug it in here? Negative 3. All right. So let's see. Is there a way that I can convert this to look like this? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get rid of the parentheses first. Two thirds times x is two thirds, two -thirds x. <laughs> Positive times a negative is negative. Two times three is six. Six divided by three is. Let's make it six over three, which is two. All right, so we're almost there. What should I do? What should I do? What's the last step? Good, add four to both sides. Now notice I'm adding the four to the like term. The like term is the two, or the negative two. So I get two thirds x, negative two added to four, something costs $2, I have $4 in my pocket, so plus two in my pocket still. Hey, my friends, is this the same as this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, you know, a lot of you are, will get to a point where you're like, I just want to be able to do it in my head. Um, we're done with second grade math. We have to move on. I'm teaching you critical thinking skills. These are problem-solving skills. And again, I've already told you that there's very little stuff in math that you're going to have a boss come up to you saying, hey, I got a slope of two-thirds and a point of three comma four. What's the equation? I mean, you would think, you would think I'm about the only job that I have to know it, but yet I've had yet to have Principal Silva come up to me saying, hey, Chris, because that's my first name, <laughs> you have a slope of two-thirds, you have a point at three comma four. What's the equation? Okay, it's yet to happen, but the we're using math as a tool to develop us a thought process 
to allow us to think at a higher level, to problem solve higher level problems in life. But we're using math as the tool to exercise. You know what? You know, you, I know many of you play instruments or you play sports. Aren't there things that you do when you play instruments or when you play sports and you're going and going, how in the heck does this even relate to the game? Yeah, I remember playing piano and it's like, oh, you have to do the warm-ups. I'm like, duh, 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 this is stupid. I just want to play songs. But if my fingers weren't warmed up, I couldn't get the octaves right with my fingers. Okay, so it related that me practicing going through the scales with my fingers was allowing my fingers to get nice motion so I had muscle memory to remember where the keys were on the keyboard or on the piano so I could play music. Okay? I have, my oldest daughter is a very accomplished pianist. That's somebody who plays the piano. She is the piano accompanist for the choir at University of Nebraska. My daughter is four foot 11, little, tiny little 20 year old kid, long blonde hair. So you watch her, she gets to this piano, her piano keyboard is here, the end of the piano is there because she's playing on a big 13 foot Steinway. And she'll start rattling out the song and it starts out pretty loud and then she hits the softer pedal, but you can still hear the piano, but she's hitting the softer pedal because the choir is to come in and start singing. It's pretty cool to see. For sports, isn't there sometimes weird drills you're doing that you're like, why? You know, it always, always goofed me up, in, especially in football. All right, hey, we're going to stretch. Well, my range of movement with my shoulder pads on, you want me to do jumping jacks? And then stretch my arms with my shoulder. Didn't make sense, but you know what it made sense? Yeah, warm up those muscles because in the actual playing situation, you want your muscles to be like, oh, I can move that way. I've, I've warmed up. So if we take this back to what we're doing with the math, we're using math as a tool to develop this, uh, this uh, cream cheese substance we have between our ears, behind our eyes, called our brain. And I kid you not, our brains right now are the consistency of cream cheese. Kid you not. I thought it was jelly. It's spreadable. What? It's spreadable as we are sitting right here. Now, I don't recommend it. Obviously. <laughs> I thought it was more solid than that. The solid ones that you see like in shows turn into the gelatinous state because they have a 10% formaldehyde solution that they put into it with radiator fluid, which gives it a form fit. That, mean, that means it's a dead brain. That, yeah. Does that mean they put brain into cream cheese so we eat on a table? Changes your outlook on Einstein's bagels, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. Cream cheese is not, it is, isn't human brains, it's cow brains. What? <laughs> How does it stay in one shape? Did like you one cut up the brain shape? for that class? It, got like a, it stays a, a it stays on a shape, yeah, because you have some you have the biggest tendon in your body yeah. called a menange which is the sac that your brain is in. And then you have spinal fluid, which is developing your cerebral cortex, and then it goes out, and that floats. And so it's floating in water. Well, it's spinal fluid. All right. All right, enough about human anatomy and sports and piano. So... Sure do. You got it. All right. Undefined slope. Okay. Undefined slope. Now, I remember I, I, I said, said this. I, I remember undefined goes with a certain type of straight line 
because they're close to each other in the alphabet. A is not close to U, but good try. V, vertical line, right? So this is a vertical line. Vertical line. So let's think about this. A vertical line looks something like this. Agree? Okay. So a vertical line is, is it X equals or is it Y equals? Oh, wait, no. X. So it's got to be X equals. Okay. So X is equal. What is my only X value that I have on that point? One. Done. Okay. If this was a zero slope, it'd be Y equals. You still follow me? So if this was a zero slope, it would be Y equals negative six. Okay. All right, last problem I'm working for the day, and this is on page 158, number 16. So I have a slope of negative 4 over 7, and I have a point of 0, comma 3. What is special about this point? It has a 0. It has a 0 here. So what is this value? It's the... It's the y value, which is uh, y intercept. It's a y value. Because it is zero comma, this is the y intercept. And the y intercept is what letter? B. B. So this is B. So if I use y equals mx plus B, do I have enough information to get this equation? Y equals what? Done. Dude. 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 All right, my friends. No. Between today and tomorrow, before class starts tomorrow, I would like you to do all of these. It's 11 problems. Uh, problem 1, 2, and 3, they want you to find the slope. So the slope equation is this. Okay, and then, and then from there on out, they want slope intercept, which is y equals mx plus b. For all the rest, so I would like you to do one through eleven, all. What page? Until eleven thirty-five. You guys got time?